So hi, my name's Tim. This is a this is a talk about making music with Ruby. It's supposed to be funny. So if you think see something that's funny and you think it might be funny, you should laugh. That's what happens in funny talks because then the speaker gets less nervous and then it gets even funnier. We all win. So my name's Tim, like I said, I work here at New Relic. This is my team down here. Hi team. We build the New Relic RPM gem that you run in your Ruby application. You might be familiar with this gem because uh, this guy used to work on it. <laughs> he used to work for me, and now he just sends me these pictures for no reason. I do nothing to warrant this treatment. And this isn't even the whole picture. This is what the actual picture is. Isn't that rude? Why does he do it, and why is there a Rubinia sticker over his shoulder? I don't understand anything that's happening in this picture. Anyway, so this is my Twitter handle. Um, it's very clever. Uh, my last name, by the way, is pronounced Kreitzer, obviously. You can tell from the spelling. <laughs> Um, it's very subtly hidden in the corner of all my slides. You can follow me on Twitter. I think I'm pretty close to 500, so you know, that one, you could be you. Um, but yeah, okay, so this is, let's, let's, let's get down to business here. The inspiration for this talk comes from a very particular musician. And since we're in Portland, this is a Portland guy, you probably know him, you've probably been to see uh, one of his shows, and that's fine. He's, he's a good guy, I should be clear. I'm gonna rag on him a little bit here. But he's a good guy, he's making money doing what he loves, and that's great. So his style, he's a pianist, he's a great pianist actually, and his style is kind of the, the new age, kind of smooth, the kind of stuff that has an album cover that looks kind of like this, or really more accurately, like this. Do you, you, know, you know what I'm talking about, like this kind of music that you find in the checkout aisle? Um, so he does, this, he does shows, and um, my wife and I were at one of his shows, and he does a, a point in the middle of the show where he says, all right, it's time for audience participation. And he looks out into the audience and he says, give me any four musical notes. And a musical note is a letter from A to G. So someone will say um, A, C, F, G, and he'll think about it and he'll play. He'll play the A, the C, the F, the G, and he'll just kind of play that a little bit, and then he'll play something, and I'm not gonna do a very good job because I'm not as good at piano as he is, like by a long shot, but it sounds kind of something like this. This is actually kind of hard to do. You get the idea, it's like, you know, he's using the audience notes to make music, and everyone in the audience thinks this is incredible stuff, how is this being done? And I'm sitting in the audience with a little bit of a different <laughs> expression. <laughs> and I'm thinking I could do that. So what I thought about is, can this process that I've just done very poorly for you be automated? And more to the point, if we can automate something, we can use it to make lots of money without doing any work. <laughs> right? That's kind of what we do. So that's the quest I set out on. So let me give you a little bit of background that will help you understand how this works. But now you have an idea of what we're going for. So. Background. Um, you can't get very far in talking about computers and audio and music without running into MIDI. Now MIDI stands for MIDI Musical Instrument Digital Interface. It's a protocol for the control of musical devices. It's been around since the early 80s. It's been around so long that most musical equipment has MIDI ports on it or has a USB port that can be used to talk MIDI. This is a MIDI controller in front of me that's sending controls to my GarageBand app that's making sound that you're hearing. MIDI is not an audio protocol. This little gizmo does not make any sound by itself, it only sends messages. Much like method calls, you might think. So MIDI is messages, and that's important to realize it has nothing to do with like waveforms or synthesis or anything like that. It's just simple like note on, note off messages. So, for the rest of this talk, I'm gonna use the Micro MIDI gem, which is a Ruby DSL for working with MIDI. It's super cool, you should absolutely check it out. Um, so an example of a MIDI message is a note on message, which has a note number and a velocity number. The velocity number is really important because for instruments like a piano, if I play a note very softly, it sounds different than a note that's very loud. And the difference is not just that it's louder or softer, it has a different character, it has a different sound. So for a synthesizer to sound realistic, you have to get that velocity, otherwise it just sounds like a robot. The note number is also kind of interesting. The note number is specified that middle C, the note that you find, you spend your first piano lesson finding on the piano, is note 64. There is no maximum note number, nor is there a minimum note number in the MIDI protocol. So you can do all sorts of stupid stuff like play piano notes that don't exist. 
and you, know, it's, you can really goof around with it. So here's a little bit of Ruby. So this, we're at Portland Ruby. This is some uh, example of working with MicroMIDI and kind of the, the details behind it. To work with MicroMIDI, you just require the gem, you get an output, you create a session object in the session, you say, hey, I want to create a note. C4 is a musician way of saying, here's a particular C on the musical keyboard at a C note. You can see there's the data, the note number that, I, like I mentioned, it's got a velocity of 100. It has a little human readable name if you're debugging. It's really, really easy to work with. Also important, you can send a note off message. This is, will become very important later, so remember that this, is, that this is a thing. You can also do a lot of other things with MIDI. You can do program and control changes. You can control entire pieces of equipment. You can do aftertouch, which is the amount of force you exert on a key after it's already been pressed, which is important for some instruments. Pitch bend, all sorts of stuff. This is an example of a really, really nice Moog synthesizer that takes in MIDI controls, much like the one from here, and makes really nice sounding music. Um, these are about $1,600. Just saying, my, uh, Christmas is coming. Um, <laughs> for those of us who don't have um, that kind of budget, this is a screenshot of my very favorite app of all time. It's a program called Reason. This is an application that lets you create virtual equ equipment and put it all in a big rack and lets you click around and cable it all together without spending anything. And you can just create like hundreds of devices. It's incredibly awesome. Per it's called Reason, R-E-A-S-O-N. It's made by a Swedish company named Propellerhead. It's, I think, about $300 and incredible. So MIDI is really fun. I think you should absolutely spend some time playing around with it. This little keyboard that I have here, I think, was about $50. GarageBand is free if you already have a Mac. Like, there's no reason not to at least goof around with this. But we need to get back to our challenge. We're going to try and build a tool that plays delightful piano music based on a series of four notes. And again, we're not just building a tool, we're building a startup because <laughs> the true goal here is for me to sit and fly around on a private plane while the cash just rolls in and I do no work at all. So I set out to do this and the first way I thought about doing this was algorithmic harmony. In other words, having the computer decide whether something sounded good or not. So I did some research. I read all sorts of research papers from all sorts of real people who know what they're actually talking about, unlike me, um, from fancy things like the Journal of Mathematics and Music and the International Society for Music Information Retrieval Conference, which is a really long name. And it turns out that algorithmically generated music is interesting, but it doesn't tend to be very relaxing. <laughs> it, in fact, tends to sound something like this. Okay, so that's, that's enough of that. So this is actually really hard to do. Um, and if we keep in mind our user persona, because we are a startup, we have to keep our persona in mind. Um, there it is. This is our persona. His name is Steve. He has a duck. And he's very stressed out. He needs to relax. And what we just heard will not actually relax him at all. It will make him homicidal. That's not good. <laughs> so what should we do? Well, at this point, we need to take some strategic inspiration from other startups that have gone before us. And there's a particular startup that's well known for making really good strategic decisions on how they're positioning their business. Um, these guys actually <laughs> kicked onto a really, really good strategy early on. And they're far from the only ones. I could name YouTube or uh, PayPal or eBay or a number of other companies. In the early days of Reddit, they figured out that nobody was using the site because nobody was using the site. In other words, people would come to the site, see that nothing was posted, and be like, this place sucks. I'm never coming back. So they figured out very quickly that it was important for there to be content. OK, now they have admins being paid to post content, but it still looks like the same three or four people are posting all the content. Also not good. So they set it up so that when you were logged in as an admin, a third field appeared when you could, were posting a new article that allowed you to create a new username on the fly. So people would come to the site, they'd be like, whoa, there's 20,000 people using this site. I better get onto this because I'm being left behind because I don't know about this cool thing. And the rest is history. So like any good startup, we will cheat. <laughs> and by cheat, I mean we will utilize pre-recorded interactions to simulate real-time generative algorithms. That's what the business plan will say. Um, in, hum in human language, what this means is we will play back pre-recorded transitions between the chords. Again, we're focused very narrowly on this use case where we have four chords. We need to make music that covers those four chords. We can do that. So for an example, from a C to an E, I could possibly record something like this. I 
I can come up with that. That's not very hard to come up with. And it, co and it covers the C to E transition. So very, very basic music theory. All of the notes are related to all the other notes by a series of what are called intervals. So all we need to do is record a series of the transitions. And this actually won't work at all because it's way too many transitions. We can't do like every note to every other note. Well, we could, but we don't have time because it's a startup and we need to make money. And that sounds like actually work and I don't like work. So we're not going to do that. What we are going to do is take advantage of an extremely big musical secret, which is that all we need are relative intervals from one note to the next. And then we will transpose from bait and we will essentially offset based on where we need to go. Let me give you another example. So that I, earlier I played CDE. Oops. If we need now need to instead go from D to F sharp instead of C to E, I can play the exact same thing, just shift it up two notes. And it sounds fine. It totally works. It's the same exact pattern, just shifted two notes. We're taking advantage of the fact that musical notes are essentially just a linear scale. Remember, in MIDI, they're just numbers. So we're just adding and subtracting numbers. That's all we have to do. So the process here is that we need to record a phrase, which is a short bit of music that transitions from zero to an interval. And let me give you an example. I did the CDE. You can see from, from CDE, there are essentially four notes. So that transition that I just played, the CDE, is a zero to four transition. We will save that. We'll build a whole library up of coming and going. We will essentially say, all right, for every transition in this, we will break it into a starting interval and a, we'll make it into a starting note and then a offset to go up or down. Is this making sense? People getting the idea? Okay. And then all you have to do really is just play those back in series, transposing the beginning up and down. And because it's MIDI and notes are just numbers, all we have to do is just add and, add and subtract numbers. So I wrote this, and it totally works. And you're welcome to check out the code. It is total 100% YOLO code. There are no tests of any kind. Um, so if you want to contribute to it, you should think very hard about what you're doing <laughs> and perhaps make better choices with your time. But you can go check it out and, uh, and see what it does. So let me break it down just in real simple Ruby um, snippets. Tech demos were startup. We have to have cool technology to show off. So this is an example of um, a Ruby script that plays all of the keys from 0 to 127. Again, just like I showed earlier, we require the gym, we grab an output, we say using that output, all the notes we're going to play are have a velocity 64. Number 0 to 127, play each one of those notes for 0 0.01 seconds. That sounds a little something like this. And that is literally all you need to do to make your computer make silly sounds. Well, that would be running GarageBand. That's it. That's, all, that's the entire code. So, but to make this work, we need to be able to record the phrases that I play. Like, I just played something for you live in real time. We need to capture that information, the notes that are being played, and save it so that we can play it back later. Now, you might think to yourself, saving notes, this sounds like a job for MIDI. I've heard of MIDI files. Isn't that what you're talking about? The answer is yes, it is. So I went to the MIDI Manufacturers Association website, which looks like it was designed in 1983 along with the protocol. <laughs> <laughs> but that's OK. They're very, good at, they're very good at protocols. I can give them a pass on the website. Um, and I went to go get the spec for the MIDI format so I could write MIDI files. And this is where I came to a horrible conclusion that the MIDI people do not have electronic specs. They do not believe in such things. They will charge me $60, and they will mail me some paper <laughs> whenever they get around to it. And that will not work because we are a startup, and we have things to do, and we cannot wait for the US mail service to deliver $60, pay $60 worth of paper. Um, on a spec. So like any other startup, we'll just make up our own standard. <laughs> so this, this is actually really good news because this, this provides an anchor technology for our startup. And every startup has to have an anchor technology that they're like well known for. It helps with like recruiting engineers. So I have big news. I'm ready to unveil my new note saving technology. It is a subscript um, of JSON. Actually, it just is JSON. It's called Note.js. <laughs> So right after you're done here, make sure and check out Hacker News. I'm sure you'll see all sorts of articles about Node.js. But here's what it looks like. Um, it's essentially an array of hashes. And each hash has a note number, a velocity number, a starting time offset in seconds based on 0, and a duration in seconds. So this is essentially saying at 0.67 seconds from 0, 
playing note 60 with a velocity of 80 for 0.24 seconds. This is the first like couple notes of me just recording this little simple phrase. That's all, that's all I did, I just recorded that and that gives me a whole bunch of note objects. And so now that we have this note.js file, we need to be able to play it back. And it turns out this is actually pretty simple. All we have to do is read in my note.js file, sample.node.js, start from a zero offset for each node in the file, we sleep until it's time to play the note, we play the note for the amount of time, we increment the offset and we just loop over that. Forget the velocity, we'll worry, worry about that later. And that sounds like this. So that didn't work. <laughs> and the reason is because we treated the file as if it was linear. We treated it as if there was always only one note being played and they were always came in order. And that's not true. When I was playing my little phrase here, I have both hands going. So I've got to have both, both of those being able to go at the same time. So it's actually a little bit more complicated than that. To be able to play it back actually working properly, we essentially read in the Node.js file, then we turn that Node.js file into a series of messages. Each note in the Node.js file becomes two messages, a note on message and a note off message. We basically make, again, I really like making arrays of hashes, I guess. Um, another, <laughs> another array of hashes um, where each, yeah, each, each note is comprised of two messages. We have the note number, the velocity shows up now. We have an at field that essentially tells the interpreter, hey, here's when to send this message in, again, seconds from zero. We then sort it so that all the messages are actually in the right order based on the at field. And then this part is actually very similar to what we had before. For all the messages, we sleep until it's time to send the message. If it's a note on message, we send the note on. If it's a note off, we send the note off. And then we loop. And that sounds like this. It totally works. <laughs> and this is awesome to me. I had no idea if this would work. I had no idea if you could actually sleep the right amount of, like if the Ruby interpreter was precise enough to sleep for exactly the right amounts of time. And it totally is. It, it's completely comp capable of doing this. So obviously we're, obvi we're almost ready for funding um, with our startup because that's all we need to do. So here's, once, once again, I'll run you through the patent pending Kenny G RB algorithm. Please don't steal this um, and start your own startup. That'd be very mean. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna convert those user-provided chords, those four chords, into relative intervals with the first chord is zero. So whatever the first one we get is, we'll assume that's zero, and then we'll transpose everything else we get based on that. So if we get F, A, C, D, we make that okay. We make the first one zero, F to A is four, F to C is seven, F to D is nine, those are our intervals, done. We then take that list of intervals, convert it to a list of transitions, so those four notes become three transitions because we only have to go in between them. Start at zero, go plus four. Start at four, go plus three. Start at seven, go plus two. Then all we have to do is play those back in order, transpose it based on the starting key, and we're done. You want to see it? It totally works. It's so much fun. All right. You see that? Yeah, kind of. All right. Do, 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 do. All right, we have our cool ASCII art, <laughs> obviously. A very important part of any startup is cool ASCII art. Um, Carl, will you give me four musical notes? Uh, A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D, he says. All right, we'll start with that. And go. It totally works. It's awesome. We'll do it again and I'll give it something a, a little more, that has a little more variety to it and you can hear it again. One of the things I noticed when I did this, and I've, I've given this talk a couple times and I've had people do it, is the, ones, the notes people give me have a lot of repeats of the same interval in it. It's actually really hard to come up with a series of four notes. Humans are not good at this for whatever reason. They come up with intervals that have, or lists of chords that have the same interval in it twice or even three times in a row. But it totally works. That's all I have to show to you today. I would love for you to come up and play with this and I'll unplug it so we don't bother everyone with the music and you can just hear it off my laptop. But uh, thank you very much.
Yeah. yeah. Questions? I'll take questions. Sure. Why not? I was just curious. The the gem that you use. What was the name of it again? Uh, Micro MIDI. And if you have GarageBand open, that just acts as the synthesizer and Micro MIDI. Interface. GarageBand is smart enough to expose its self as a MIDI output, so okay. you can say pipe it there and it will do it. So the code that I had where it was grabbing the first available output, that's always GarageBand if it's open. Okay. Yeah. Other questions? So you can hook that up to Reason and set up a whole bunch of square waves. Oh yeah, definitely. You could just go crazy with this. You could have it control like external synthesizers and make like actual music with like actual musical instruments, not even just GarageBand. And then follow up question. Yes. What happens if you enter four of the same notes? Oh gee, let's go find out. <laughs> I'm troll proof. You can't troll my application. <laughs> Don't even try. Unless you have flats. I can't do flats. I can only do sharps. But you... <laughs> well, we can totally do this. It just plays the same thing again, of course. It... But there's a zero transition. It just sits there and just does something nice. So we could actually do, you know, we could do something slightly less interesting or slightly more interesting. A good example of what I was just talking about, that, that was the same one twice at the end, because I was bad at coming up with two different ones. What about H, 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 H? Oh, let's find out. Let's find out, clever guy. Boom! Validated. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I have not. I just thought ahead of, like, I'm going to give these talks to a bunch of programmers, and programmers love to, like, yeah, have you thought of this? <laughs> Um, sorry? H means B. Yeah, I know. It's not German, so. No. <laughs> Other questions? Yeah? Um, so instead of giving it a like, velocity, would you be able to give it, like, instead of giving it a note on and note off, give it, like, an array of arrays, with each array being, like, a uh, 15th note or a 16th note, so that we could dictate a tempo? Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right. The method I used for playing them back in order is just using a sleep to get to the next time. You could do some math based on the expected tempo and multiply the intervals based on that. When I was recording them, I just had a metronome going at 120, and that's what I recorded, so that way it would sound like it was more or less in time. And it took a couple tries. I really only spent about 10 minutes recording all the transitions, which probably I should have spent more time on, but um, I also am not very good at piano. so. But yeah, that's, that's how you would do it, is you'd need to multiply the, the, the seconds, unless you had a completely different way of making it play back the right notes in order. But I think even if you had like a fancy MIDI file player, I kind of think that's how it works. Like I think it just sleeps and sends the messages. All right, that's it. Thank you very much.